Okay, today's project. We have a GPS antenna running in. Da, 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 ba, ba. Into a Thunderbolt. Trimble Thunderbolt. GPS DO. And what that stands for is GPS Disciplined Oscillator. Now, the whole point of this project is for calibration purposes. Now, right now I'm feeding a 10 megahertz signal that's very accurate into my frequency counter here and as you can see at 10 megahertz it's drifting at the end. The problem is when you're in a lab environment they pump around a, uh, in a network a 10 megahertz signal and they use it to calibrate all their equipment. So if you send something in for calibration they have a precise 10 megahertz frequency to go by. So my project here is this box. Now inside the box is a ovenized crystal that runs at 10 megahertz. And by ovenized I mean it's heated in a controlled environment that's as stable as it can be. And what the software in the box does is take the time from the eight satellites it tracks and offsets the internal crystal to make a precise 10 megahertz signal. Now this signal comes out either as a sine wave, which we're using here, where it's coming out 10 megahertz and we're going into a 50 ohm load, or it comes out as pulses per second on this other jack. Now here we can see some of the data. There's eight satellites being tracked. Here's some of the packet data coming out of the box. If we look, here's GPS time and UTC time. And if we go down, we can see it offsetting the time and the pulse per second in nanoseconds to GPS time it's offsetting and 10 megahertz to parts per billion. Now here is how accurate this is. Okay, look at 10 megahertz accuracy. 1.16 times 10 to the 12, okay? Uh, I, I believe that one gigahertz that's like 10 decimal places and then the hertz is like a tenth of a hertz accurate. Uh, here's pulses per second. Okay. Leading synchronized to UTC within 20 nanoseconds. Okay, so that's a little out of control. So my project is is this Sencor SC45 frequency counter also has a built-in uh, 10 megahertz ovenized crystal that it uses for uh, calculating what the frequency is going into it. Obviously, it's in need of calibration. It's, uh, it's drifting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this uh, frequency counter and I'm going to add a jack on the back. I'm going to cut a few traces, and I'm going to feed this pulses per second square wave, kind of like a digital, uh, what you'd see in a digital circuit. Uh, I'm going to feed that into the back of this, and then shut off the internal crystal and use the GPS one. So it'll always be accurate. Uh, you may say, you know, being a little out of control then, you know, with the accuracy, but... If you are testing something for frequency and you're off, then what are you really testing? Or if you're adjusting something to a certain frequency, I mean, you can't have it drifting down there. And it's 20 hertz drift over here. So, uh, I can, the way it's set up right now, go in here and just go in there and calibrate it and it'd be set. But what happens is when you turn this on, it takes so long for it to warm up, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, I can just have the GPS signal go shoot right in the back. It's precise, and uh, you've seen the accuracy. 
So that's my project. These are on the surplus market because they now have 12 satellite versions out. Yeah, you know. This one's from 2004. It's got the latest firmware for it on it. And it came over a slow boat from China. You can't beat that. Antenna, box, power supply, the whole thing.